Algebra Notes, Chapter 3, continuing with our exponent theme. This is notes on zero and negative exponents, the third and I believe final assignment in this chapter that deals with this overall theme of exponents. <clears throat> zero and negative exponents are a little trickier than positive exponents. What I have written here are four different exponent answers. I just randomly chose three as the base, and I did three to the fourth power, which you know means three times itself four times. Got this off the calculator as the answer. Three to the third power, three times itself three times, is 27, and three squared, and three to the first, and so on. Well, these make sense, because when I see a four here, in my mind, I know that means to multiply three times itself, one, two, three, four times. But what does three to the zero mean? Can I take three and multiply it by itself zero times? That doesn't make a lot of sense on one, on one hand, does it? I bet it'd be tempting to say the answer is zero, because if you're multiplying something by itself zero times, then you have nothing. You have zero. That is not true. I want you to look at the answers so far for these ones I have written down. As I go down the list from 81 to 27 to 9 to 3, isn't it clear that I'm dividing by 3 over and over again to get from this answer to the next one down to the next one down? It's divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Well, then if I keep that pattern going, it looks like the answer for 3 to the 0, it looks like what I'd have to do is take this answer, 3, and do another divide by 3, right? Because that's what's been happening so far. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, not 0. And it turns out that 3 to the 0 power is 1. And it's very strange. It's not the answer you would have expected to get. But it's one of those kind of weird mathematical things that you have to memorize. And what ends up being true, you know, I just showed you how this works for threes, okay? But what ends up being true, this is really important but easy to memorize, is that any number to a zero power equals one. I shouldn't say any number, anything to a zero power equals one. Five to the zero is one. Ten billion to the zero is one. But x, a variable to the zero, is one. This junk right here in the parentheses, excuse me, this junk in the parentheses to the zero power is one. Anything, anything to the power of zero will give you one for an answer. Lock it in. Okay? So now we're starting to make sense of things a little bit, but could we keep going? If I keep lowering the exponent by one, wouldn't the next thing on the list be three to the negative first? Well, I think I could figure out what that is then if I continue this divide by three pattern another step. So I'd have to take this one and do it divided by three. Let's see, one divided by three, one divided by three. Your brain's already thinking, well, that isn't a very nice answer. One divided by three is a decimal or fraction. You're right. One divided by three, let's just leave it literally as one over three. One divided by three, a fraction. Okay? And then I'll keep this pattern going a little longer. Three to the negative second. Now I have to do divide by three again. And one third divided by three is one ninth. That might be some fraction arithmetic you're a little rusty on, but just for now, I want you to take my word for it. Three to the negative third, I have to do divide by three again. And one ninth divided by three is one over 27. And I'm going to keep it going one more time, three to the negative fourth power. And I have to do one over 27. You guessed it, divide by three. And I get one over 81. Hey, look at this. Look at this entire list. There's, a, there's more going on here than you might have thought at first. Because 3 to the positive 4, 81. Look, look, look. 81. 
1 over 81. 3 to the positive 4, 3 to the negative 4. 27 for 3 to the third. 1 over 27 for 3 to the negative third. Right? 3 to the second, positive second is 9. 3 to the negative second is 1 over 9. 81, 1 over 81. 27, 1 over 27. 9, 1 over 9. And of course, it works here too, right? 3 and 1 third. So it looks to me like we can now make sense of negative exponents if we think of it in the following way. To deal with a negative exponent, what you should do is turn it into a positive exponent and then move it to the bottom of a fraction. So if I have two to the negative fourth power, don't try to you know, multiply two times itself negative four times. You just pretend, oh, it's really two to the positive four. I'll wipe away the negative, but I'll put that two to the positive four under a one. If it's x to the negative six, just pretend it's x to the regular positive, but put that answer under a one on the bottom of a fraction. Same thing for this one. Pretend it's positive, put it under a one. And one more time, pretend it's 10 to the positive two and put it under a one. So a little more to it than the zero rule, but nothing that you can't understand, right? So finally, here's a little example of one, a problem that you might see in the, uh, in the online work. You have x to the third times x to the negative ninth. And a couple of assignments ago, you learned how to deal with this situation. You're supposed to add these two powers together to get the answer to this problem. Add the powers. Well, three plus negative nine is x to the negative sixth. So it might seem okay to have your answer be this. It makes sense, right? But a lot of times, teachers or textbooks or online programs, they'll have instructions that say, you are not allowed to leave your final answer with a negative exponent in it. Well, that's okay, because I just showed you right here in this example above how to turn this into this version. Right? You pretend it's x to the positive 6 and put it under a 1. And this is what you would type into the computer or you know, have on your paper as the final answer. Okay? There you go. Rules for negative and zero exponents. Um, a couple things to memorize. Shouldn't be too bad. Have a good one.